Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about color and yarn and fiber. So spinning with color, knitting with color, and we're gonna be talking about what we have planned for Advent for this year. So I hope you'll stick around for that. Hey guys, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia, and this is Taking Back Friday. This is a moment in time where we stop and we talk about something to do with knitting or spinning or weaving or dyeing. I like to talk about the fiber arts and all the wonderful things that color and craft can do for us. Now today, I have lots and lots of things on the table to share with you all about color and yarn and knitting and spinning and so many good things, but I don't know if you can tell, but Right behind me here is my loom from home. This is my baby wolf loom that normally lives in my dining room. I have brought it over here uh, to basically film a weaving class that's gonna be going on the School of Sweet Georgia. I'm gonna be talking about weaving twills using a four shaft gamp project that I have planned. And if you ever follow me on my uh, weaving Instagram, Low Meets Loom, you'll see the twill blankets that are coming off of the loom as part of that course. And so that's all coming on later on this year. But I wanna tell you about the class that just launched this past week, and it's called Color and Fiber Play with Diana Twist. Now, we have a class on the school called Color Play. It's a free class that you can join and you can watch, and it's all about how to mix and match different colors for when you're working on projects, uh, like knitting projects, crochet projects, how to make color combinations by understanding a little bit more about color theory. Now, Diana has a class here that is all about spinning with color, and it's about spinning a very specific kind of color. It's about spinning blended color and carded color and color that you make on hackles and drum carters and blending boards and hand cards or even hand combs if you wanna use that. But she's used a lot of fiber prep tools to create fiber that is super colorful, super fun, and stuff that you can spin with. So let me tell you a little bit about Diana's class, this class called Color and Fiber Play that's now on the School of Sweet Georgia. So early last spring, you know, when we were in the midst of all of the craziness that was happening around the pandemic and a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress, I had some conversations with Diana because we were talking about what kind of a course could we put together for this year. And I know that Diana's done a lot of work before with spinning with spindles. She's right now spinning with uh, supported spindles a lot, um, but she is a spinning instructor and she works a lot with color and blending different colors together. And so we were having conversations about what kind of class could we put together for this year? And Diana was telling me about how during the, the start of the pandemic, she had been making Rolex. She was just making so many Rolex. She had boxes and boxes and bins and bins of Rolex that had been blended together with all different colors. And she was telling me about how um, she wasn't necessarily spinning any of the fibers yet. Her joy and what was bringing her peace and was bringing her um, this soothing feeling during this anxious time was making the Rolex, just making and blending this fiber and blending colors together, seeing how the colors interact and making all of these wonderful things with the fiber prep, um, not even moving into the step of actually spinning with the fiber. And so what she wanted to do was she wanted to share this uh, practice that she has of making small batch yarn where you card a bunch of fiber, or you blend a bunch of fiber together, make roll legs, make some, some fiber prep, and then you can spin that together into make um, small skeins of yarn. And it's just this entire process of blending the colors together, spinning them together, making a small skein was really um, enjoyable for her during this past year. And so this color and fiber play class comes out of that practice of blending colors together and making these fiber preps. So I wanna share with you some of the things that she has brought with her for the class because I photographed them all and they're beautiful. I'll show you like the proper photographs, but you can see they are super light and airy, beautiful roll legs that she's created here. These are delicate, they're soft. Some of them are sparkly. This one has copper sparkles in it. And just the blending of all the colors is just so 
so much fun to look at, let alone to actually spin these things. So Diana's made a lot of these beautiful blended Rolags, but she's also made a series of uh, Rolags here that are all rainbow colored. So there's a rainbow set of Rolags. And then she's also made some fiber here that's been pulled together. Um, that is all, this is, if you unravel this whole thing, this is a, it's just a giant rainbow color with sprinkles of uh, some sparkly stuff in here as well. So if you unravel this whole thing, you can start to see it's, it is a rainbow that is unraveling from this, but she's prepared all this so that you can spin it into one long continuous rainbow colored yarn. And then if you um, chain ply this, then you'll be able to preserve all of those colors so that they will stay clear and distinct and you'll have a perfect rainbow. And uh, she shows pictures of how she used a rainbow yarn to fill in for color work in her the yoke of a sweater. There's so many beautiful things that you could do with a fiber like this. So this entire set of things, from the rainbow Rolex to this rainbow carded prep, all of these things, she's also made carded bat, like a giant rainbow carded bat, shows multiple ways of making rainbow bats and things like that. All of these things come from the rainbow fiber kit that we basically made for her class. So this is the color and fiber play kit, and it specifically has all the colors in here that she uses in these fiber preps. So there's a natural white color, there's a dark color, like a charcoal color. So we wanted to include kind of white and black in the mix, along with the six colors of the rainbow. So we have orchid, pumpkin, lemon curd, basil, fizzy water, and empress. So those are the colors that are in the kit. And out of that, she's done a number of different color studies, you know, blending different colors together to get secondary colors, blending those secondary colors together, or lightening colors by carding in some white, darkening colors by carding in some black, just doing all sorts of different color experiments with the carding and blending of fibers together. There's so, so many beautiful things here to spin. And uh, we've been talking a lot about blending board this year because it's so compact and portable, it's easy to use, and it can very quickly produce fiber that you just, it's just so delicious looking and just wanna spin with all of it. Like this one, this fiber prep is super, super delicious. This one is all, if you can see, it's all smooth and blended and like every inch of this has all the different colors in it. There's like a little bit of this pale yellow. There's um, streaks of this gold silk color. Some of the fiber in here, um, she's added a little bit of silk, a little bit of sparkle. All of those com things come from our other kit, the spinning mix-in kit. So yeah, it's delicious. But this one was actually pulled off of a hackle with a diz. And so she demonstrates how to pull that fiber off of the hackle as well. Um, so, so much fun. So many things to spin here. So that is it for the spinning part. If you are at all interested in spinning with carded fiber prep and making textured or heathered yarns, I really encourage you to check out Diana's class, but to also check out the other classes that we have on the School of Sweet Georgia. We have quite a number of spinning classes now, and they cover everything from spinning with different sheep breeds to spinning different techniques to spinning and making all these fiber preps in order to spin with. So um, yeah, definitely go check those out if you are interested in spinning. Now, if you are interested in knitting, I have something for you this week as well. This is a shawl that was just knit from a new sock blank that we have for July. I don't know if you guys have survived the heat wave, but we had a crazy heat wave in Vancouver, like really crazy. <laughs> And um, thankfully, it's a little bit cooler now, but you can see that we have this colorway here that's called Summer Dusk. And I feel like this captures how flaming, blazingly hot it was over the past week or so. So yeah, this is what the colorway looks like if you unwind the sock blank and wind it into a ball. And you can see sort of the gradient effect of this, this rainbow effect that it has here. Um, it's beautifully saturated, very vibrant, very hot colors. So you can see that wound into a ball. This is not how it comes. It comes as um, a sock blank, a knitted piece of fabric, and it's all kind of rolled up and then you unravel it as you knit it. And so this is one of the things that you could knit 
it into. Um, obviously you could knit this into a circular shawl or a half pie shawl or something like this, but as a triangle shawl, simple top-down triangle shawl, that is very, very easy to do. So if you're interested in this shawl pattern, this pattern is called Summer Brights and it's designed by Tabitha Hedrick, our design director here. And it's a top-down triangle shawl. So you start basically at this top corner and then you just keep increasing, increasing. And there's a little bit of eyelets and just eyelet lace. Very, very uh, simple and straightforward, but it's just very effective and something that's quick and easy to make. Yeah, this is lovely. This is like the perfect kind of project to carry around in your bag and you could don't even have to wind it into a ball first. You can just knit straight from the sock blank and just have a shawl at the end of the day or the end of the week <laughs> or however long it takes to knit this. Okay, so let's talk about Advent now, okay? I'll show you the box in a minute. I know it's only July, but Advent this year, we have been working on it for months now already, and I'm finally, finally ready to tell you a little bit about what is happening for this year's Advent calendar. Now, I want to let you know that we have to talk about it now because pre-orders for the Advent are going to be happening very, 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 very soon. So it's a hint, hint that if you would like to get one of the Advent calendars for this year, I really encourage you to go to our website and make sure that you are signed up for our email list. Um, that is the only way that we let let people know when the uh, item actually goes live. So make sure that you're on the list so that you get notified about when the advent calendar actually launches on our site. But it will be very, very, very soon. So let me tell you a little bit about our advent and what we do for advent every year for Sweet Georgia. This is going to be the fourth time that we do an advent calendar. The first couple of times we ha had a big box and every day you kind of open a package and inside the package was a little bit of yarn and it would be the instructions for the day for what you're going to knit that day. And so that's what we had for the last, the first two. And then the third one we tried to do something a little bit different where we had more color options, that was one, and we had more pattern options. So last year we had two different color palettes, we made three different patterns, and every day, even though you saw all of the colors already, every day you would unwrap a clue. Now this year we're kind of going a little bit back to our original idea of what the advent calendar was supposed to be like. And so I have here this is not what it's going to look like. This is a structural proof. This is what they send us from the print shop. Uh, but this is basically a box. This is what it's going to look like. Ta -da! And uh, the it's not going to be white. <laughs> We're going to I'm going to put something nice on the box. It's going to be a really nice looking box. I promise you it's going to be a nice looking box. But inside the box, you are going to get a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> So inside the box, there are going to be little mini skeins of yarn that are going to be individually hand wrapped and you will unwrap these on a, on a daily basis. We're going to have two different color palettes. You won't be able to see all the colors because part of the surprise is unwrapping each one of these mini skeins. But we'll let you know that there's two palettes uh, that you can choose from. And there's also going to be three different patterns. So there's going to be two knitting patterns and one crochet pattern. So two palettes, three patterns. We're continuing with that theme from last year. All three patterns are going to be included in the kit, but then when you go to make it in December, you can choose which one you actually make. But each day you'll be able to unwrap a little bit of yarn or a little bit of a treat. So there's going to be a few special treats in the box as well. So all the details are going to come out very, very shortly. Uh, it will get sent out through email. So make sure that you check your spam, make sure that it doesn't go to spam, make sure that you add us to your trusted list or whatever you need to do in order to make sure that you don't miss the email email, but all of the details will be in there. There's going to be two color palettes, three different patterns. So that is what I can share with you about Advent. Let me know if you're excited about that. Let me know if you think that this is going to be super fun. I'm always super excited about Advent. I think it's really a lovely way of incorporating just a little bit of crafting time every day during the holidays. It just gets to be such a hectic time. And if you can just pause for 10 minutes a day or half an hour a day or an hour a day to sit there with your knitting in your lap and just do a few stitches. It's the best feeling. I think it's the, it's the best feeling. <laughs>
So that is basically it for today. I hope you guys are all staying happy, staying cool. I know that for myself, I'm gonna be spending a bit of time getting my loom all dressed up and ready to weave. So you can let me know in the comments below what your favorite thing is about knitting advent calendars or crafting advent calendars. Tell me what is the most exciting thing about them? What do you love about them? Is it the mystery of what's going to be opened every day or is it seeing the final project? I would love to hear your thoughts on this. And that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you like this episode, please do hit the like button. And if you would like to see more content like this, please do hit subscribe. And we come here every Friday to talk about something to do with craft and color. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next one. All right, bye for now.